my people, I know we cannot see anything, only my fire here in my garden. Uh, there's no electricity, as you may know, here in the beach is prohibited to have uh, electricity because of the turtles. Uh, but well, I, I sat next to the fire and I, I wanted to make a video because of a friend that I just met uh, through another friend um, that I like very much, she's very nice. And for her and for everybody else that, that have been asking me these questions and that have been telling me about it, like uh, lately my friends are afraid, like some, some older friends of mine are like, like if I was religious or what, or because I'm posting all these things about, about, uh, about you know, about the Bible and about the God and, and like always, you know, oh, I've always done it, but right now they seem to be noticing a lot. Okay, so I just want to, it's not to explain myself actually, but they want an explanation, they want to understand how is it that I have this fire or what is it, am I religious or what? You know, first of all, I want to start uh, reading a little bit of the Bible, of the Gospels, in St. Mark um, uh, 4.11, Mark 4.11, and Jesus said, and he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may, not, they may see and not per perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven, of, forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know you not this parable? And how then will you know all the parables? The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, and taken away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay. Well, I read this to you because actually I was born actually in a family where they were not religious at all, but they were Catholics, like normal attending church, you know, Sunday sh attend, and sometimes they didn't even attend in church, my mother and my father, but my grandmother and, and all the elders in the family did. Um, anyway, so uh, in my situation, personal situation, I could not really uh, understand what was going on, but I did respect it that some supernatural power created us, because I understood that was what it was, I just knew it. And when I was seven years old, I have a, like a personal, uh, like a personal thing with Jesus. It was it was the the pagan Christmas season, and we were watching this this TV, and I saw a, a scene of the movie of Jesus where he was healing all the sick people, and he said to to the to everyone, he said, "Whoever follows me will be able to do this that I'm doing and more," you know. So I thought to myself, oh my God, like when I grow up, I'm going to see all these sick people. And there's two ways only. Either I follow him and heal the people that are sick around me and, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm like healthy. Or I stay sick with the sick people or I become sick, I don't know. So I said, no, no, I'm going to choose to follow him. So I said, I remember at seven years old, I said, no, no, I want to follow you happens what happens. Like I want to do exactly as you said. And I remember dreaming that I was that I was even crossing the desert with, the, like I was coming out of Egypt with Moses. I had this dream, I understood perfectly the Exodus that night. And then it was like if I was part of these families, I just felt it, I, was, I understood what they did and I felt so sorrowful and sad for, what, for their stupidity. I felt like, like they should have known better, like all the, the errors they committed with God and, and etc. I, I had reverence for God and respect and a lot of fear of God, but, but in a good way, like I loved him too much and I, I, I wanted to do his will just because I loved him. And just because he said, if somebody hurts you, put your other cheek. And if somebody, you know, hurts you, just uh, be nice to them, forgive them. I did that all the time with my family and everybody just because he said it. Not because I felt I was good, because I wanted to do it, but just because he said it and I loved him so much and I think he was the coolest person I ever met in my life. Okay, by that time, I never saw him in person. I just believed because of that movie, of course. And besides the people going to the church and me having my, my Catholic uh, ceremonies, you know, whatever, even though the, the family of my dad back in Argentina, they had like these origins of like um, Irish-Jewish, which are uh, Irish and from, from Irish and Italian, 
este, roots, but they were Jewish. Anyway, so when the Hitler, when, when, you know, when the Second World War, they, they run away and they landed in Argentina. And they, of course, uh, denied the, to be Jewish in order to survive. Like many people and many others that came here in, after the Second World War, they don't even know they have Jewish roots. And they became Catholic or they became Christians. Even my family here in, in, from the north of Mexico, which is my mom's side, she knows she's like Israeli. She, she knows she's Hebrew. She's not, you know, she, that's, that's, they feel these roots very deep inside them. Anyway, but still, uh, they couldn't say they were Jewish. And also, so, and that's why also there are also fake Jewish in these people, in this world. There's people that fake to be Jewish and they're not. And then there's some uh, Israelites and real Hebrews that are so, all, all mixed up everywhere without knowing who they are. Well, but that's something else. Anyway, so the thing here is that, um, okay, I was trying to tell you how, how did all this happen to me, okay? So, so when I grew up, of course, Catholics are not really in contact with Jesus. They don't understand what Jesus say. They don't do what Jesus say. And I was really um, sad because every time we came back from church, I would be asking my mom and dad, hey, uh, the, the, you know, the priest just said that we should love each other and treat each other well, and then they were fighting. And I was like, how, how can this be, you know? He just heard what we're supposed to do, and you are not doing it. If we obey God, he'll, he'll bless us. You know, I understood that perfectly. I knew that we just need to do exactly as we promised God, you know? We need to be, have, him have him in consciousness and obey him. Just, it's so clear, you know? Anyway, anyway. But no, it wasn't for them. So it was just hell, and people were fighting for many other things. You know, humans and, and adults fight for everything. They, they get into trouble that they shouldn't, and they are sad all the time and grumpy and, and all of this, and they, they harass and oppress kids, and they were not so, like, everybody around me were, like, crazy, right? I mean, that's how I saw them when I was a kid. But I had Jesus, and I had my grandmother who believed in Jesus and was full of grace, like, good, you know, she was an, an obeying... Christian, she was really she had she had she had Jesus, so you could feel the grace in her house. So I had this first-hand experience of what it felt to be around grace, like people that prayed and got what they asked for, you know. Because people hear the, uh, I mean, people, God listens to the prayer of the saints, of the people that obey Him, and love Him very much, and really truly love Him, and He knows who loves Him perfectly. He reads your hearts. He's looking at you every moment, every second, every day. So anyway, time passed. I grew up. Everybody came against me. In my school, everybody rejected me. People talked about me, things that were not true. They were oppressing me, harassing me. They invented stuff that, that hurt my heart so much that I even tried to, to commit suicide when I was 15 years old. But God didn't let nothing happen, and I, and I was okay. I mean, I, nothing happened to me, but he made me feel repentful and, and all this, that. But then I think that the enemy was trying to get a uh, side in my life, right? So he made some of my school friends, one guy personally, uh, to betray me, you know, into like think he made me think that he loved me and that he was gonna marry me, blah blah, blah and he just took my trust away, and all this and just that destroyed me, right, my heart. So I was really struggling to find my identity. My parents couldn't understand me. Um, I couldn't see Jesus really. I was an adolescent, so I kind of lost my way, right? So okay, I I at 19 I got married with the wrong guy. Uh, I got, I, to make the, the story a little bit fast because I don't know how much time I have in this video because this is not my account. I'm using the account of a friend of mine. I'll, I'll put it in my account soon. Anyway, so um, I, um, I, well, I, I got married with all the laws, you know, I, I be, like really, like with a wedding and all this in, on the Catholic Church, blah, blah, blah. And then 10 days after, I, uh, I, I fainted and I died. I, I literally died. And the doctors thought I was dead and everything. But no, in that moment, I was out of my body and I was having this experience out of my body where an angel was talking to me and saying, because I said, why am I dying? I, my, my mom and dad will be very worried about me. I don't want to die. And the angel said uh, that God said that it was because God didn't brought me to suffer this. And I'm like, what are they talking about? Suffer what? They meant that this guy was super bad soul, but I could not read his soul because I was so young and naive that I could not see how bad this guy was for me. And God loved my soul so much that he didn't want me in his hands. So I'm like, how God really loves me a lot. He's so jealous of me. Why? And he said, be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid of, of that who can kill your body, but be afraid of that one who can kill your soul, he said. And I never read the Bible. So that was, that actually, I read it in the Bible later in life. I, I'm like, oh my God, this is written in the Bible, actually. And I heard the words directly from the angel, you know, that proving that the, the sons of God, we have his laws and everything he said written in our hearts. We know it. You know, the Spirit tells, talks to us about it. Even if we didn't have a written Bible or a written Torah, 
we can hear it in the spirit. Anyway, so the thing is that um, okay, so I promised there when I was while I was dead, kind of like out of my body with no no nothing. I mean, I could not move, and people thought I was dead. And I promised. I said, God, I know everybody will be against me if I divorce because it's like the guy's family that I got married to is like they were like kind of rich people like that and they they wanted me to do everything right and me I was supposed to do everything right and blah 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 and I was doing it actually and I, I was trying to do it but then God said no you're not doing this and I don't want you to do this and so I'm like okay I promise you that I will I will obey you and even if the world comes against me I will divorce from this guy but just please let me leave and I'll, I'll I promise I'll find the love of my life so I came, so actually God listened to me. He's so merciful. He's so beautiful. I, I've, I've experienced the merciful, the merciful love of, of God so many times that I could write a five, five, 500 videos, I swear, to tell you how much mercy I know about God. So then I came down. I mean, he let me leave again, okay? And I filed for divorce immediately, telling my mom and dad that if I didn't get divorced, I was going to die. So my dad supported me. First, he, he didn't want me because he was like, no, you got married. Now you make yourself responsible and go back to your husband's house. I'm like, no, Dad, I can't, because if I do, I'll die. Please believe me. I looked d deep into his eyes, and he believed me. So he, they supported me. So I came back to my house right away, a week after getting married and making all this huge party and inviting 300 people or more to the party and just making all this mess, going to, to a honeymoon in Las Vegas that I never saw the guy during the whole vacation. I just run away from him the whole, mo the whole week because I, was not, I didn't want to be married with this guy. And then when I came back, I died, you know. It was just whatever so God divorced me and after that it was trial after trial because of course I didn't understood that the Catholic demons all these people that were and the family and all this of course they were like tagging me as a divorced person and then I was pregnant so I didn't want to have an abortion or anything so I had Danny my daughter and I raised her the most with the most love I could and with the most discipline like the best I could give of myself and I was honest I swear I never like really gave any bad example to her I didn't bring guys into my house I didn't do anything wrong against her. I didn't even party or anything. I was just working because I was on my own. Nobody wanted to support me. My family didn't want to support me. Nobody supported me here in Mexico. And after, But Jesus supported me. God supported me and I ended up living in this the incredible um, gated community in front of the ocean with dolphins and it was just magical just because I obeyed God. So I understood that because I obeyed God, He was always always giving me a lot more than anybody in my generation. He was always blessing me endlessly in, in a way that it was incredible for people to see how much he was blessing me because even though after I got divorced, I mean, I'm pregnant, he found me a way to have a scholarship in the Tecnológico de Monterrey, which is like, like, a, like a college that is very expensive, but I could get in with a scholarship, a 90% scholarship, with my daughter in my, in my arms, you know, and I could went for for most of my college there and I mean do a lot of things that I, sh that I couldn't be able to do because I was a single mom with no money but God just let me do many things with no money so anyway guys I'm not here to tell you how God has saved me from not from the financial part but also to tell you how I found him right so <laughs> found him again because all of this time that he was helping me is, is like I knew it was God but I was not acknowledging Jesus because actually I was reading the tarot cards for people because one of my friends from Mexico City gave me this tarot card deck I, I the, 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 because I was so sensitive and the Holy Spirit was with me the, the, the like the demons in those things uh, like rapidly made me think that that I was like I, I actually knew how to do it with people got me hired for that like I was in this company of psychics that they paid me six thousand dollars a month because I was so good at it you know so, but it was not from God it was really not from God anyway I know that because later uh, I was running this this uh, ceremony of of peyote in the in the mountains in Querétaro in, in Real de Catorce and I was actually the shaman with all these healing powers and I was the Reiki master and I would heal people by looking at them and thinking good and just you know not thinking good I will give them to God because I actually did believe in God the only thing is that I had no Messiah in the equation I had not Jesus in the middle of, of my knowing of God I just knew the power of the loving kindness of God and all this and I had I knew his mercy and I could work with it but the, the problem was that I, I didn't knew the power of Jesus and he, the need I had in my life for him because we all need it but we think we don't. So I was trying to be righteous and be perfect and be, you know, honorable and be straight and everything right to get the favor of God, right? But I wasn't perfect. I was a human, but I could not see my imperfection clearly. I could just see 
that I, I could become great, you know? I could become great, it didn't matter how bad anything was before or whatever, you know, how bad it began. Anyway, so up there in the mountain, guys, I, I was the only one finding the peyote. I actually found the peyote, the biggest peyote is like 42 little, you know, like a, it's like a pizza ball. It has little slices, like 42 slices, like the eldest, eldest peyotes I found. And like 42 pieces of that, you know, also like many, I remember the 42 because it was just like very recurring, recurring. But I found many and people didn't find any peyotes. I was the only one finding them. It was just like, okay guys, so this is part two, okay? Because I didn't have enough time in that other one. So yeah, it was magical. I mean, it was actually a magical night. But between all of that, it was also a super powerful, supernatural thing over there, no? Uh, that night, there were many people. I could in that in that time in my life, I had this like supernatural eyesight. Like I could look at the people. Right now, I can see the suffering and all, but it's it's only directed by the Holy Spirit when I do it. But in that time, it was like I could see exactly what people were doing, where they were coming from, all their scenes, what they did, everything, you know. So there was in particular this woman in front of me named Victoria, and I just saw that she worked for an abortion clinic in Peru. I remember very well uh, bringing her into repentance, uh, like with this loving kindness, like, you know, and, and everything, and, and having her being released and all the demons leaving her and all this happening and people puking and bringing everything out. And me, like, bringing, I don't know, it was just powerful. Meanwhile, all this was happening, okay, I was, like, straight praying to God. Like, I was just, like, completely looking for Him in my spirit, in my soul, in everywhere. And, and, and it was happening. It was, I felt His energy. I was so, I felt so powerful with Him in the universe. I just felt I was part of Him, so grateful to be alive, okay. And one of a sudden, I just get out from my, like, if somebody just took me out of that place, and I'm brought 2,000 years back to a, to a scene where I'm standing in that same mountain, but it was, a, it was daylight. And one of a sudden I just see in front of me Jesus. And I'm like, oh my God, this is Jesus. Is that Jesus? Oh my God, this is really Jesus. This is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm like, this, ugh, it was just too much, you know. I was like, no, no, like this is, am I having this dream or what? No, but no, it was real. No, and I'm like, oh my God. So when I looked to my right, there was this European girl that was with us in the group, and she had all these weird tattoos on her, and and then she she spit into uh, against Jesus, and I'm like, oh my God, why is she spitting? Like, Jesus is such a nice guy. I mean, one thing is not to follow him, and another thing is to hate him, you know. But that's when the Holy Spirit showed me that the Antichrist is real, and people hate Jesus. And I'm like, oh my God, how can someone hate Jesus? Because I was so naive that I could not understand how somebody ever hate this good man. Like, it's almost impossible to hate Jesus. He's such an amazing character, you know. It doesn't matter if you believe in him as your savior or you follow him. He's just an amazing man, you know. So anyway, I'm like, I'm not like her, you know. I, I rejected her immediately. I'm like, no, like, how, how can she reject him like this, you know. I want to hear him. Like, I want to go where he is. So I jumped down the mountain. Like, I, I run down to try to get to him. Him. So I just I just run to him like I wanted to be I, I was so happy to see him I just want to be near him so I run there run there and while I was running down to get him I hear around me in the whole mountains and and, and the biggest voice like the, the strongest voice I ever heard in my life I swear this was a supernatural voice this was not a voice of a human it was actually the voice of God and many other people have say how they've heard it even the prophets and I swear I heard that exactly as it's written in the Bible I heard it all over like in 360 degrees all over myself and the voice said I am the truth the way and the life and nobody comes to the Father but through me and I'm like and I just knew it I just knew everything else was a lie in that second the veil of my eyes fell off and I knew that there was no yoga, no tarot, no psychics, no no whatever way to try to get to God and, and you know, try or, or righteousness or actions that you could do or perfections that you bring out. There's nothing, nothing you could do about it actually. It was up to, up to him in your in the purity of your heart. Like you had to have a pure heart. But I knew that a long time ago. It was just that I was lost, you know. And it was that he was he was saying the the Sermon of the Mount, 
Anyway, so I was just like, this was just an amazing thing, you know. After this, like, my life changed completely, of course. But right after this happened, and I'm waking up from the beach, and I'm there. It's, it's dawning, actually. The, the morning was coming, and the people were there. And actually, in the group of people that was with us, there was this little kid that the mother, she was a single mom, and she left the kid alone to, to be with a boyfriend. And, and a woman that was there was taking the kid away to the mountains. And... The Holy Spirit prompted me and told me everything about it. I just knew what was going on. I don't know how I knew. I just knew. And I ran to the woman because she was grabbing the, sh the, the child, and the child was crying. And I, I got them far away, and I grabbed her from the hand, take the child away from her. And I said, no, I said, your gods ask you for a child sacrifice, for a blood sacrifice to give you whatever you want. But my God, the only thing that asks for is a contrite spirit and a humble heart. And I took the kid and brought it back to the mom. And actually, I was saving the kid from murdering because the woman wanted to kill the kid in, the, in that desert, in that mountains for the Santeria demons because she was a Santera. You know, this is how the power of God is like, you know, he's not going to let anything bad happen. God is great, you know, and he puts his children to, to be brave, you know. And I was so, I've always been super brave because of God. Like, it's true that his kids are as bold as a lion because I can tell you that I can feel that energy in me. It's like there's no fear inside of me. I just you, you feel the backup of God all around you. And you just feel God all, all, all beside you. Anyway, so I came back with the kid. I gave it to the mother. And these people in resentment, because there were witches in, in the group, and they they got mad of, of, I don't know, they just knew, because spiritual people know, you know, they know, like, they are demonized, all, and they have demons, and they know when, when God is present or Jesus is around, and they just fear Jesus. And so they left me in the middle of the desert with no, um, with no shoes and anything, and with nothing. They took everything, and they left me there with Dwayne, my ex-boyfriend, okay, my ex-boyfriend that he just could not stand on himself. And I'm like, Dwayne, don't worry, we're going to be fine. Like, God is going to save us from this. It's going to be fine, don't worry. And he was completely freaked out. And I was more freaked out of, of like, being there with him. I was, like, resolved not to marry him because I, he was, like, running uh, before me. And he was going so fast that I thought, this guy, I'm, like, I cannot rely on this guy ever, you know. I cannot trust him. So anyway, so I'm praying to God. I'm like, God, please save us. I know you will. And then a bull, but, but also I, I, I yet uh, recovered Jesus, right? So I, I didn't knew anything about Christianity or I never went to these temples or anything. So I didn't knew about like using the blood of Jesus like now I see people doing this. I never heard that about in my life. The only thing I saw is that I was, I was dressed in red and that my ancestors were, they, you know, I, I forgot the name in English, but it's toreros. Like they, they do the, you know, the Spain thing with the, with the bulls and all this. So anyway, so I was dressed in red, and, and we were in the middle of the desert, and then these, these, these bulls with, with the cows, you know, they were in a group of, and, and one of the main bulls sees me red in red because they're trained for that, and he gets off from the, from the circle of the rest of the cows to try to horn me, okay, to hook me in his horns. So he gets, I swear, he goes to me like he was going to kill me. As soon as I see him coming and I knew what he was doing, I, I knew I had no power with this huge animal and there was only a miracle that could save me. And I heard a voice that said, the blood of Jesus. I heard that in my inner ear. So I, I mean, I heard that in the ear. I just heard it. And I said it out loud, the blood of Jesus, I said. And when I said that, the bull acted like if water was on his face. He, he moved his face from side to side. He headed to one to the left side and he left the place. He just left. It was Satan. It was a demon. It was a demon inside the animal. He wanted to kill me. Okay, just because I decided for Jesus in that in the desert is crazy, but that's what happened. So I kept walking. Dwayne was in the front. I could not get to him. He walked so fast. Anyway, so I was walking and I knew I was gonna find that rescue, but I didn't know how, but it was dangerous. We were in the middle of the desert. And one of a sudden, after a lot of struggle and walking, hours of walking, it was getting dark. And I saw a little uh, light far away, and I'm like, Dwayne, look, there's some light there. And he's like, I cannot believe it. And I'm like, yeah, I saw it when we are going back and down from the little hill. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it was true. We run to the light. We knock the door. There was a family of Mexicans, like lots of uh, very nice guy with his family there in the middle of the desert, and I'm like, hey, please save us, like, we, we're coming like this, and he's like, look, I'm gonna save you, because it's actually a miracle that you're alive, you were in a very dangerous place walking, and you're a girl, and, and you know, like, they could have raped you, killed you, whatever, and they, girls never come here alive, you know, and I'm like, oh my god, you know, so anyway, so he got me, 
in this nice room he gave us in his in his place there and it was full of images of Jesus even though images are idolatry and that thing it was a sign we we're in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the desert it was Jesus who saved us okay so anyway the next day uh, he tells I told him about a friend that I used to have here in the Caribbean that she went to live to the desert and I said oh I had Margarita that here came here to the desert Maria a long time ago what was her name actually and he said, oh, it's my only neighbor. She she lives behind me. So I'm like, really? Yeah. So I was like, just this can this is amazing. Like Jesus took me to this place in the middle of the desert, to the house of a friend of mine that used to be living in the Caribbean. This is just crazy. And I met her and I'm like, look, this happened to us. Like, thank you so much. And well, she gave us breakfast, treated us super good and took us to a, a bus so I can go to Querétaro for my parents now. So anyway, that was my encounter, like physical encounter, like rea really with Jesus. It was so, so strong, no? But I, so strong that I could not grasp what I just lived. I was just like, like, I couldn't believe this. I mean, it was, I, I believed it, but it was too much. It was like I could not digest it. So when I went to my dad's, I'm like, dad, this happened to me. I told my dad what happened. He was like outstanding. He believed every word I ever said to him because he knew strange ha things happened to me all my life. But, um. Still, I could not grasp it. So that's when I went back to Quintana Roo, and, and two months later is when I had my rapture dream that I already recorded it. And then afterwards, I had the New Jerusalem or the New World uh, dream where everybody was restablished, everything was restablished by God after the destruction, like everything was back to normal, but, but, but better and beautiful, and everybody was young, and everybody was good, and all these things, I told you. But well, guys, these is just a little part because I'm going to actually tell you more about this because I have not just the appearance of appearance of Jesus in my life but also the day that that God gave me testimony of his son I need to tell you that one too that was a real vision I was not even sleeping that time I was awake and and I need to tell you that one because that one is amazing and it's I I've, I've seen somebody else having that in the bible actually the other day I read it and I was very happy because I thought oh my god this is like I, God gave me testimony of his son once again and I love you very much guys I need to sleep I'm super tired every time I talk about these things I just get so so tired I send you all my love and blessings and and I love you Elvan and all my other friends and I love you anyway I I love you even if you don't understand what I'm passing through or why did Jesus and I got so friendly and all this happened but I just uh, I just hope that I can you know be a light to anybody that is searching for the truth or believes in Jesus and forgot about him. And I have many, many other things to say and I have many information to, to share with you about all of this, but this is basically in, in a summary what happened to me. So hugs to Elvin and to everybody else that's, that are watching these videos tonight. And yeah, God bless you and Jesus blesses you right away just by listening to this. Bye-bye.